Wondering as the weekend went on against Wisconsin, did you start to see the number of quality scoring chances that you were looking for? And the second part of the question is, were you impressed with the way that freshman forward line showed some, I thought at least some pretty good chemistry in their opening weekend? Yeah, I mean, uh, I, I, I put them together, not expecting to keep them together, uh, but to take some pressure off them. Generally when freshmen play with other players, upperclassmen, they have a, a tendency to play differently. Um, the pressure to pass the puck to seniors or juniors, uh, I'm not sure that they'll stay together this weekend, but, you know, besides that, I mean, I think all three of them can contribute this year. It's just a matter of uh, to what degree and, and in what capacity, but um, you know, I, I, I felt like we did get better as the, the, the weekend progressed as far as generating scoring chances. Obviously Wisconsin's found a, a good goaltender and a grad transfer. And I thought, you know, he was the difference uh, in, in many cases on the weekend, but you know, going into the season, I knew that scoring goals was going to have to be something that we do by committee because we don't just, we don't have a Cole Caulfield in our lineup um, or, or a Holloway. Um, so we need to, you know, to score goals by committee. And, uh, you know, we've got some help on the way offensively over the next couple of years in recruiting classes. But, you know, right now is that, you know, we're a good enough hockey team to where we should be able to win games with the guys that we have. And, hopefully that we're going to get contributions from a number of players uh, throughout the year. You know, it was a nice, nice comeback effort by Colin Tyson on Saturday night. You know, I, I expect that we'll hear more from uh, Alex Steves and, you know, hopefully Michael Graham, but there's also guys that I'm hoping take a step this year. If they don't, we're going to have some problems scoring goals, but we have to hope that, uh, you know, guys like Pavanka and, uh, Graham Slaggart, um, J Justin Janicki, um, you know, all these guys are going to have to contribute more uh, from an offensive perspective for us to, to get back to scoring, you know, three goals a game. All right. Thanks, Darren. Next, we'll go to John Finneran. John? Uh, hi, Jeff. Uh, happy Thanksgiving. Uh, I wonder if you could uh, talk to us a little bit about uh, your uh, your thoughts with your uh, goaltending and uh, and your defense, and also uh, give us a little preview of uh, what you uh, what your team is going up against uh, at Michigan this weekend. Well, first, um, you know, I it, it's it's COVID has created issues um, above and beyond the the health and welfare of. of uh, society and athlete, athletics and every aspect of life. But the one thing that, you know, starting this late in the year is that it, it neutralized our ability to have that first month of the season where we play non-conference games. So guys can get their footing. Like if anybody thinks back to, you know, the Cale Morris's sophomore year, it took him a month before he took off. Um, you know, him and Dylan St. Cyr uh, kind of rotated that, first month and you know kale took over to start the big 10 season that year and he went 17 games without a loss we don't have the luxury of having those non-conference games that first month of the season to kind of get the bugs out as a team and i would say the same thing applies to the young goalies that we have uh and i consider dylan young and the fact that you know he is uh even though he's a seat listed as a senior he's really a red shirt junior and um I, I think that he has had minimal experience playing at this level. Same thing would apply to Ryan Bischel. Um, so this whole first month is going to be a break in period for our goaltenders. And you know, I think from an experience standpoint, neither one of them have a lot of experience. So they're getting thrown right to the fire by starting off against Wisconsin, who's a really talented offensive team. And then the same thing with Michigan coming up, you know, so it's going to be under fire that they're going to have to, they're going to have to perform. I thought Dylan was really good on Friday night. Um, he showed some flaws in his game a little bit on Saturday, but you know, him and I talked about it and I, you know, I, I have a lot of confidence in Dylan as a young man and he works extremely hard. And I, I think that in time that, you know, potentially he's going to, you know, have the opportunity to move forward in, in a more positive direction. He's got to learn to play back to back again. I mean, let's face facts. He hasn't really played hockey since his last year with the national team. 
he did play a couple games early in his freshman year, but he took that sophomore that's that last year off. And, you know, he's got to get back into the groove of playing back-to-back -back games. Um, and, and, and Ryan Bischel is a good goaltender. You know, he's, he's going to get an opportunity here in the near future as well, because we have to see what we have. I mean, we're in that stage after losing two great goaltenders in a row, um, we got to figure out what we have back in goal. And I, I would assume by Christmas time, we'll probably have a pretty good idea of where we are in our goaltending. Um, but I, I do believe and have some confidence in both guys. It's just a matter of uh, them performing under, under, under fire uh, in this first month. And then to answer your question about Michigan, I mean, um, they added uh, a huge freshman class that, you know, that's just uh, scary. Um, They've got a lot of high-end young guys that are right now, you know, they had a, a decent returning team and they were really, you know, going in, in the right direction at the end of last year. And they did have a, a, a fairly substantial loss with graduation, but they brought in, they brought in several guys, uh, both forwards and defensemen that are difference makers. And, you know, we're hoping that's us in another two years um, with the high-end recruits and, that's, you know, certainly what's leading them right now. I mean, they're fast. They have a lot of skill and, and ability. Um, this is the best Michigan team, especially with the goaltending they have in Strauss Mann that I think I've seen in a number of years. So uh, we're going to have our hands full this weekend. I think if we play smart and, you know, we will need good discipline and good goaltending, uh, you know, we can have some success. We did last year when we went to Yost. But this team's uh, even better than that team a year ago at this time. So uh, we'll have to we'll have to play really smart, do good things with the puck. We have to possess the puck and not be chasing all night long. Uh, and that's what Michigan has done in their first two weekends. They've really forced the opponent to chase a lot. All right, thanks, Coach. Next, we'll go over to Mark Skoll. Mark. Hey, Coach. Uh, first road trip of the year. Uh, obviously, with COVID, things are completely different. Was wondering what, how your road trip plans have changed uh, due to the virus and what your plans are. Well, to be honest with you, we're really under the direction of our medical staff. Uh, you know, we had a, a meeting on Monday um, after we had a weight room session in the morning, um, and they pretty much got a eye-opening uh, lecture from the medical staff, our trainer and our team doctor. And um, it, it's going to be, it's going to be life is going to be different on the road than it's ever been before. Uh, first and foremost, and foremost, we'll be, you know, we'll be taking two buses for social distancing purposes, as opposed to one. Um, the hotel, you know, we're all going to be on the same floor. Um, we really have to be limited as far as our uh, time in public spaces, including elevators. Um, we have to test uh, while we're at Michigan twice uh, on Friday and Saturday mornings. Um, and then, you know, the, the locker room space and things like that. I mean, when you're on the road, you're kind of at the, uh, the will of the, visit, the, the home team and the facilities at Yost are minimal at best. So, um, you know, our guys are just going to have to continue to, to, you know, abide by the distancing rules as much as possible. And then certainly wearing face masks uh, in the in the reduced space that we'll have for locker room facilities at, at Yost Arena. So uh, it will be different. You know, the guys won't be able to eat or drink on the bus unless they drink through a straw because they have to have their masks on. Um, it's just another round of, you know, getting acclimated to the new normal uh, under COVID. Thanks, Mark. Uh, next, we'll go to uh, George Bashora. Happy Thanksgiving, Coach. Same to you. Thank you. Um, we've, you've had some time off since Wisconsin, and I was just curious about the discussion um, about composure and, and not giving in to the opponent um, with Colin Teese and taking that penalty um, in the second game. And then the second part of the question was going to be, what's the message to the, the five in front of uh, Dylan to, you know, help them out and, you know, stop playing so much defense and, and play more offense on the other side of the ice? Well, I think that's, you know, that's a, a combination of our forwards and defensemen. Uh, but to answer your first question, I mean, um, 
Now that's very uncharacteristic, uh, the, the penalty that Colin Tyson t took. Uh, you know, I did, uh, I did discuss it with him and he knows better than that. I mean, discipline's always been the strength of our program. And, um, you know, I, I feel like, you know, if it was 10 years ago, that probably even be considered a, a good hit. Uh, he didn't raise his arms. Um, he was, he was hitting a guy though, that isn't as tall as him. And, uh, but he was in a prone position and, and he's going to have to really, you know, learn from that as are the rest of our guys. I mean, for us, I mean, we've talked a lot about making sure that we, we understand the importance of, of how we have to play, especially in a game like that, where we had a chance to win that game. Um, but it, you know, the bigger, the bigger issue is right now is us, us finding a way to, to possess the puck more offensively. Um, it starts from our defensemen and our breakout, um, our transition game through the neutral zone and, and certainly in the offensive zone. And, and that's a five man unit. It's not just the forwards or the defensemen, but um, we ice the puck like 14 times on the weekend, which is not a good, a good, uh, a good habit to get into. And again, you know, I go back to the fact that we don't have a break in period to play non-conference games and, when you're playing teams like Wisconsin or Michigan, that's not t the time to be, you know, you know, trying things that, you know, just aren't there. Um, we have to possess the puck better. I mean, we were shorthanded against uh, Wisconsin on the back end. We had forwards playing on defense and um, that certainly didn't help matters. I thought that Cam Burke did a pretty admirable job back there filling in. Um, we had a couple guys up front out as well. Um, you know, hopefully we'll be closer to a full lineup against Michigan. And, uh, you know, in reality, we may have had time between the Wisconsin series and Michigan, but in other ways we didn't because it was final exam week. So we only skated a couple times during the exam week um, and really didn't get much accomplished outside of, you know, keeping them in game shape. Um, but we've had a good week of practice this week and um, you know, we've kind of, you know, shown our guys what they're going to have to do to be successful against a team uh, like Michigan. Uh, the, the biggest thing is, is, is to really try to minimize when you do get the puck, you really have to minimize giving it back easily. We have to try to possess the puck more consistently. Um, you know, our offensive zone game has always been a strength of our program. And we had minimal offensive zone time uh, on Friday night, Saturday night, we were a little bit better. But, you know, that's something that, again, is going to take some time playing games and, and, and understanding how we have to play to possess the puck in the offensive zone. And we have to do a better job of, of, of leaving our zone, of, of coming out of our zone. So, you know, we've been spending time on that. We'll continue to spend time on it. I mean, um, it's going gonna, it's gonna to take a little more time, in my estimation, to, to really uh, get back to that. I mean, we have a, a fairly veteran team. And the, the veteran guys have got to grab a hold of the things that they've learned in, in past years um, to, to improve on some of the deficiencies that we showed in the opening weekend. All right, we'll do uh, one final question uh, from John Finneran. Jeff, I wonder if you could uh, comment a little. You, you mentioned the uh, incoming recruits list. You, I, I saw the uh, story. I, I wonder if you could uh, give us some comments about this uh, group that's coming in and uh, and and you talked to, that they might be, have a little more offensive punch to them. Well, you know, we certainly feel strong about, you know, we have, we actually have a, a, another freshman that hasn't signed yet that I can't speak on, but um, that, you know, Sasha Pastajoff um, is one is, is potentially going to be a first round draft pick in the NHL. Hunter Strand's another kid that played uh uh, in the national team program, he's currently playing because he was uh, only a junior in high school. Is playing in the USHL as a senior this year. He's already got off to a good start. He's in the top ten scorers in that league. You know, we we feel like we've got some good offensive guys coming in. And I, you know, the other part of it is, you know, having some guys on the back end that have some offensive capabilities too. Um, you know, I think that uh, you know we we signed Ryan Helliwell last year. Um, he deferred this year. Uh, he's out in the BC Junior League. He's got some offensive upside. And both Ethan Strackey and uh, Ty Gallagher, both guys play for the National Team Development Program. Um, I'm not sure we're bringing all three of them in next year, 
but um, I will bring, probably bring in two for sure. Uh, it, a, a lot of it's going to depend on their development this year with COVID and everything that's happening across the country um, on who's able to actually get games in and actually continue their path on development. So we don't have a lot of guys coming in next year because we only have, you know, three forwards and, uh, and one defenseman graduating. Um, so we, we, we've got guys coming in and, and, and frankly, the guys that are here currently, you know, I would hope that in time that, you know, Ryder Ralston and uh, Landon Slaggart uh, and Grant Silinoff, you know, all three of those guys are going to contribute offensively, you know, as they get acclimated to college hockey. And, and, and even more so, I mean, you have to hope, you know, we've gone through this process where we have such big classes in our junior and sophomore class, you know, next year, they're going to be seniors and juniors. And that's where, you know, that's the, the teams that we've had great success with are led by the upperclassmen. And, you know, we've got a good group of seniors this year and Colin Tyson's gotten off to a good start. You know, I think Matt, Matt Hellickson's got off to a good start. I think Pierce Crawford has as well. Matt Steves got injured in the first game. Um, but, you know, we've got a good group uh, there, but it's not a big group. And, um, you know, over the next few years, not just next year's class, I can't comment on the class that's committed to us the year after, but that class is probably the best class in the country. So uh, it's about retaining them. And, you know, hopefully we're in the same situation Michigan's in right now um, in two years. I mean, we're kind of in the process of rebuilding our offense. You know, when you lose underclassmen, um, you know, we went through that spell of Anders Bjork and Andrew Ogilvy that left as juniors. And then you graduate guys like Jake Evans and Cam Morrison. Freshmen coming in can't replace those guys. Um, they, they can in time, but they can't immediately. And, um, and that's where we kind of are right now. We, and that's why we have to count on some of the guys that are in that junior class and even the sophomore class uh, to help us uh, more offensively. You know, and, and it's too early to, to really assess that um, once we get in, you know, like I said, by Christmas time, we're going to have a much better feel where we are because uh, we have, you know, eight more games before Christmas. And, you know, we have to try to, you know, to, to generate offense collectively. And, and um, you know, I think that we'll, we will get better defensively and help our goaltending out a little bit more just with more uh, acclimation to the game again. Um, but I, I, you know, I still feel strongly about this group and the chances that, you know, that they're going to bounce back and, you know, it's not the best time to do it when you're going into Yost, but, you know, uh, we went in there twice last year and won, and, you know, we have to have the same kind of mindset going into this weekend. All right. Well, thanks everyone for coming and thanks coach for your time. Thank you, Dan.